Hey everybody, it's Elliot from Little Punk Evil here, and today I'm here with Chris of King Woman. And today we are here at Good Beer in New York City. Are you ready? Yes. Let's <laughs> do this. So, how are you doing today? Are you happy with the positive response to Celestial Blues? Yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's been very positive. Very, uh, it's kind of surprising how positive it's been. Not surprising, it's an incredible album. Thank you. My favorite song on the new record is Box. Can you tell me what that track is about? Um, it's a story I wrote about um, like one, one soul split into two bodies, basically like twin flames or soulmates. Um, and one kind of has a harder time with love. And so when they meet on planet Earth, um, one is trying to love the other one, but it, they basically keep running away and um, they're kind of a sinister character that almost destroys the other the other half. Um, but it ultimately leads to their transformation. So that's what it's about. <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah. I find your music to be refreshing. If you could describe your music in one word, what would it be? Mm, transcendent. That is, a, that is a good word. <laughs> What would you do if you died and went to hell and Satan told you he was a big fan of your work? I would say I'm a big fan of your work too. <laughs> <laughs> that is an incredible answer. I would say the feeling's mutual. <laughs> I love what you're doing here. <laughs> Which song from the album means the most to you? I notice a lot of emotion in your voice. I suppose Coil. It's kind of the most triumphant song on the record. Um, it's kind of the, like, you know, the, a lot of the record is about my descent into hell, but that record is about me, like, kind of rise, rising from the dead and um, becoming victorious over all circumstances and all darkness, essentially. Nice. Do you ever see yourself in Lucifer? Yes. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> How excited are you? <laughs> How excited are you for your upcoming sold out shows here in New York? Very excited. Uh, New York crowds are pretty amazing and we have a lot of community out here. Uh, it's just always a good time at Vitus. Uh, David Castillo is one of my really good friends, so. Uh, he really takes care of us when we're out here. So yeah, I'm excited. I would be so nervous. The first five shows, shows sold out, that has got to be a little nerve wracking. You know, I don't really get nervous performing. Uh, it was more so nerve wracking just being unsure what the vibe was going to be and if people were going to come because of COVID. So we were planning on doing more shows, but uh, we kept it kind of limited because we weren't really sure if people were going to be coming out to shows because we haven't played in, in over two years because of everything going on. So yeah, it's been, a, it's been good though. Do you believe there's an afterlife and what do you hope it would be? Sure, I think, I think it would probably be whatever you wanted it to be. Yeah, why not? What yeah. would you want it to be? Hmm. Um, somewhere with a nice recording studio, a bunch of puppies, Lots of candy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All my friends and family. That Nature. Sounds, that sounds great. Yeah. That would probably be my, my uh, definite afterlife. I love your sound so much. Would you ever consider doing an all acoustic mellow album? Yeah, I actually have considered doing like maybe a, even a stripped down version of Celestial Blues. Wow. Yeah, like an unplugged style yeah. version. I thought that would be really cool. That would sound incredible. I love the dark imagery in your music videos. Are the visuals just as important to you as the music? Absolutely. I, I, I don't feel that this record would be what it became without the visuals. I, I, I really love creative to be a creative director and it's one of my favorite parts about um, creating a, an album. So yeah, it's, always, it's probably the most exciting part to me. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's another way to express yourself. Was it hard to find your voice as a musician? 
I mean, music's always been very natural for me. I guess it, it, it was hard learning how to sing and figuring out where my voice belongs. Uh, I feel like on Created in the Image of Suffering, my voice is strangely deep. <laughs> and um, I think I found my voice a little bit more and there's more variety in the vocals on this record. Yeah, I agree. If you could travel in time to go back and visit the younger version of yourself, what would you say to yourself? I would say, don't be so nice to people. <laughs> I would say have better boundaries and don't be so nice to people and don't give people so many chances. That's a, that's a good answer. What do you think you'd be in life right now if you never pursued a career in music? I think I would probably be a therapist. <laughs> um, I like to help people. So I'd probably work in some type of, yeah, I would probably be a therapist or like a psychic or something. <laughs> Yeah, that's a cool job. What would your own vision of hell look like? Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we are on hell. Maybe we Earth is hell. hell. Is we hell. would never know. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to feel better when life overwhelms you? How do you conquer anxiety? I create. I work on music. Or I... Or I sleep. <laughs> that is good. Yes, music, creating music, listening to music for me is definitely the ultimate anxiety killer. So, What kind of dreams do you mostly have when you go to sleep? <laughs> uh, I have dreams that happen quite often. So like kind of like visions almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So, Quite often, yeah. I dream a lot. That is, that is really cool. Mm -hmm. My dreams never make sense. Really? <laughs> There's always some symbolism in dreams that you can find some meaning in all of it, I think. It's all kind of subconscious. Yeah, mm -hmm. dreams are very interesting. I love dreams. I love to like learn about dreaming and lucid dreaming. And it's very cool. <laughs> Is there, oh, sorry. is there a funny characteristic about you that most people don't know? I mean, I think anybody close to me thinks I'm pretty strange. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm a loner for sure. I like to be alone. I, uh, I went to visit my manager in Mexico City and we threw a couple parties and she's like, you know, after spending some time with you, I gotta say, you're really fucking weird. <laughs> Cause I'll just like be in a crowd and everyone's talking and I'll just stop and just leave the room. <laughs> And constantly withdraw. I, I have a hard time being in being around people for long amounts of time. So I need to I need to withdraw constantly and be by myself. I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I when I go to parties, I actually get a little down, and sad when I'm around. Yeah. Like even if it's people I like, I just for some reason I just introvert. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I love to be alone. <laughs> when and where do you usually feel the most at peace with yourself? At home when I'm not around people. <laughs> I love being alone. Just sitting down and just, just relaxing. Chilling, cracking jokes by myself. Laughing at your own jokes. Yeah, smoking weed, making beats, just being alone. I love it. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> <laughs> A similar thing, yeah. except for except for the weed. I just sit. Doesn't matter how it's smoking weed. Little punk people. <laughs> Just chilling out, making music. Uh, sometimes I play video games. Yeah. Just turn off my mind. What yeah. video games do you like? I love Halo. Oh, cool. you play and it's a little nerdy, but I, I like Minecraft too. So. Really? Yeah. Um, what do you record on? I have a. Uh, I just recently got an Apple laptop, and I have Logic Pro. That's so funny. I use an interface and just plug in my guitar into that, and that's what that's I do. What I used to. Cool. <laughs> do you think so, you're going to release an album? I hope to. I, I've been compiling up a lot of songs, been recording, uh, but I, I really do want to release an album at some point. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people would be down to help you <laughs> because of all the interviews and friends you've made along the way. Yeah. It, it would definitely be something cool to do, mm -hmm. and I've been wanting to do that for a while. So. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, we 
to do like a full band or acoustic? Just myself, acoustic. It's kind of hard to set up a band at my age because not many people play instruments. There is like a few people that are cool, but like for the stuff that I want to do, like the cool acoustic stripped down, like Radiohead dreamy type of stuff. Mm, I love Radiohead. Awesome. Yeah, me too. They're incredible. Yeah, in Rainbows. Yes. So good. But also, Hail to the Thief was one of my favorites. Okay, Computer. Yeah, I've been listening to them for a long time. All their stuff is incredible. Yeah, totally. Can't go wrong with any album. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, I got bullied in school. Trust me, anybody who gets bullied in school ends up being the coolest person when they grow up. I was bullied so hardcore. I was homeschooled, went back to school. Then I graduated early because I was getting bullied so badly. So just so you know, depression's totally normal when you're young, too. Like, I was so depressed, and I still deal with depression, but I'm home you'll be s- fine. I'm homeschooled, too, and I have one friend. Listen, one real friend. in life, you do not want too many friends. True. You want quality friends. Exactly. Quality over quantity. Trust exactly. me, I know this. I've got a lot of wisdom under I my used belt. To have, I used to have quantity, and now, since I became homeschooled, none of them talk to me. Yeah. But, you know, I think kids in school are, can be very cruel. They can be very cruel. Because a lot of them are dealing with things at home, and then they project it out into their peers when they're at school. True. So that's where a lot of the bullying comes from. There's a lot of ins- – it's just a breeding ground for, like, cruelty and insecurity. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I did not. All. Exactly. And I feel that homeschooled kids aren't, like, conditioned by, you know, being – all these kids that they're hanging out with at school. So they really become very special, unique, in- unique individuals yeah. because they spend a lot of time alone. And they really have to, like, sit, spend time with themselves and, like, learn what their actual interests are and who they are. And I feel that it made me who I am, like, spending so much time alone. It's really cool. It's it. When you get older, you're, you'll understand. and You'll be like, I'm so glad that I did that, you know? I'm already glad that I did that. Yeah. And you're doing something so cool. Like, imagine where you'll be in five years doing this. It's going to take you to amazing heights. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. Absolutely. No doubt. No doubt in my mind. You're welcome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, uh, Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Celestial Blues, and that's about it. (laughs) Thank you for making Celestial Blues, and thank you for coming to this interview. Thank you.